As a wet lab scientist, generating vast amounts of data is a fundamental part of your job. Yet challenges can arise when you are relying on other people, say data specialists or bioinformaticians, to analyse the data for you. And while this collaboration may be valuable, it can lead to delays in getting your work analysed. And if you don't fully understand how the data was analysed, then it may lead to misinterpretations of the results. This video is dedicated to those of you who want more than just a temporary solution to data analysis. It's to those of you who are committed to developing a more comprehensive understanding of bioinformatics yourself. Now, to be clear, this isn't a guide on how to break into the bioinformatics profession. Although these steps could help with that as well, uh, this video is more about how traditional wet lab scientists can become more self-sufficient in the data analysis aspects of their work. The good news is you don't need an entire degree to become competent in the aspects of bioinformatics that matter the most. You may have heard of the Pareto principle, which states that 80% of results come from 20% of the work. So in the spirit of Pareto, what are the 20% of things you can do to get 80% of the way there in terms of your bioinformatics skills? So I've outlined a process in the rest of this video on how I think you can develop this skill set. I myself started in a wet lab background and I transitioned into bioinformatics. I did go down the formal education route, but at the start I was kind of teaching myself. So the process I've outlined here is things that have worked for me and also things I've seen work for other people, but this is by no means the only way to do it. Before we kick off, just to note that the journey to learning bioinformatics can be tough, especially at the start but it's definitely achievable for anyone who sticks with it. So the first step in your bioinformatics journey is to learn to code. This doesn't mean becoming an expert programmer. It just means learning the fundamentals of a programming language and learning how to manipulate data. There are so many programming concepts out there, most of which won't be relevant. Your aim here is to just get comfortable with the coding fundamentals and learn how to interact with your data effectively. What programming language should you learn? Well, there's a few different things you should consider here. So firstly, what are the main programming languages used in bioinformatics? The main ones I've seen are Python and R. They're both widely used in bioinformatics and they're both relatively easy to learn in the sense that they have a syntax which is quite similar to the English language. They're also great for data manipulation. They have great communities behind them, so you won't have problems finding information online. Another thing to consider is the languages used by your peers and collaborators. So let's say your lab already has an extensive code base in Perl, then it might make sense just to stick with that. So yeah, there's not one size fits all when it comes to the programming language. Pick a language which you think uh, best suits your situation and then run with it. So a simple roadmap that I would suggest is to start by learning your chosen language, either through courses on YouTube or on online learning platforms. Once you grasp the basics, so once you've gone through that uh, fundamentals course, you want to apply your skills to some hobby projects. Now that obviously depends on the time you have available, but hobby projects are a great way to solidify your understanding and they don't necessarily have to be related to bioinformatics, just anything which you find fun, which is something you're going to stick with basically. Okay, so once you've learned your programming language and you've potentially applied it to a hobby project or two, I think the best next step is to just dive straight in to a bioinformatics analysis, specifically your bioinformatics analysis, whatever that may be. Now, it's pretty normal to feel lost uh, when you first start learning to code, and you may feel like, oh, I'm not good enough yet to start, but the best way to improve is often just to dive straight in. So the analysis that you do is obviously depending on what data you have and what data you need to analyze. However, here's a general three-step process that you can follow. So the first thing you want to do is research your analysis. This might involve reading relevant papers, especially exploring the method section of papers that have done similar analyses that you want to do. It could be talking to colleagues and collaborators. It could be asking questions in forums like Biostars, and then just general research, reading articles and searching the web. Once you've kind of got a grasp on the theory behind the given analyses, the next step is to find an existing workflow. So I would first check with your, again, colleagues and collaborators, seeing if they have any code or if they have any preferred methods of doing things. But if not, you want to search online for these workflows. And by workflow, I just mean someone has published code to do a certain analysis and it will often be well documented and it's something that you can just follow along yourself. You want to ensure that this workflow does come from a reputable source, but for most common bioinformatics analyses, you know, standard analyses, there's always going to be uh, well-documented code and workflows out there on the internet. You just got to find them. Okay, and that brings us on to the third step, which is to 
follow the workflow using your own data. Now, the first time you do this, it probably will be quite difficult, but remember, if you get stuck, you can ask your peers, you can participate in forums, you could even ask an AI chatbot for clarification on certain parts of the code. So just a quick example of that three-step process. Let's say you have learned R and you want to analyze your own single-cell RNA-seq data. Well, the first step would be researching single-cell RNA-seq analysis in R. You will likely find numerous papers and discussions about the topic online, so I would recommend reading through those. You will likely read about SERAT, which is the main package for doing single-cell uh, RNA-seq analysis in R. Now, the second step would be to find an existing workflow online. For common analyses like single-cell RNA-seq analysis, this is not difficult. There are there's a ton of resources out there. So a simple search for single cell RNA-seq analysis in R will likely yield results which contain those, those kind of workflows. And for the purpose of this example, when I searched that, I found this one result, which is basically a whole course on single cell RNA-seq analysis. They take you through the theory and they take you through the code as well. And it's well documented. So what you would then do is follow that workflow with your own data. Now, when you're running code, one thing I recommend is to take time to really understand what's going on because it's very easy just to copy and paste the commands, but that's not gonna help you learn. The way you learn is to really take time and try and understand what each line is doing and write comments in your code. So the next time you have to repeat that analysis or when you come back to your code, you've got your own comments explaining what the code is doing. This may take a bit longer, but it's really helpful for you know getting that true understanding of what's going on. Okay, so just to wrap up this video, I want to emphasize that you are not an imposter. Often when people venture into the field of bioinformatics, they can feel imposter syndrome. It's totally normal. Everyone gets it. I had it. And I think the best approach to getting over it is just understanding that it's a thing and it's normal to feel that way. And then having a student mindset and just persisting. Like it's going to be hard at the start. You're going to get stressed. You're going to feel this sense of self-doubt like you're not good enough. But just take it one step at a time. It will come eventually. If you just keep going and focus on continually learning and applying your knowledge, that will go away over time. And in my experience, the motivation comes once you've already started to see some results. So do your best to overcome those initial hurdles. And if you acknowledge your early successes, then I'm sure that will motivate you to carry on and go further. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found that useful. If you did, do leave a like and I will see you in the next one.